know a lot of people want to use like uh what is it? Google Voice or something like that. It's a free service, doesn't cost you anything. Uh, but it, it doesn't have all the capabilities you're going to need, uh, especially if you start scaling up. Uh, so I would stay away from that type of stuff. I think, you know, the Grasshopper accounts, they start at, I think, 10 bucks a month. So it, it's not expensive and it's, it's definitely well worth it because, you know, if your phone dies, you can't even, you know, you lost your phone, you could quickly transfer it you know to your spouse's phone your friend's phone uh, or even just open up your laptop and start answering it right from the the app so as long as you have an internet connection and a device you know you can answer your phones you can forward it to people uh, i've got people in the philippines answering the phones for us as well uh, all through uh, the grasshopper app so i mean it's, it's super simple to use I'm sure there's other options out there, uh, but I mean, grasshoppers work for us and that's who we use. Uh, and then talking about the boots on the ground person. So finding the boots on the ground person, uh, I wouldn't just grab the first person you find. <laughs> so you wanna look for them and make sure they're, they're capable of doing all the things we talked about uh as well as the maintenance so you know if, if a spring is broken can they fix a spring uh you know can they uh, take dents out of the building can they replace the siding and things like that are they afraid of heights you know they might have to get on top of uh the building to fix a roof leak uh so you got to make sure they're able or willing and able <laughs> to do all that stuff uh so when you're looking for your boots on the ground person, you want to ask all those questions. You know, what experience do you have? Are you afraid of heights? Uh, when are you available? Uh, so on a smaller facility, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, small, probably 50 units or less, uh, you're not going to need a boots on the ground person very often. Uh, so you're going to have to figure out a price point that'll work for the boots on the ground person and a schedule that's gonna work for them because no one wants to work, you know, four hours every other week, right? You're not gonna be able to retain anybody. Uh, so you need to work it into your budget. You know, with such a small facility, you don't have a whole lot of wiggle room uh, to, you know, be wasting on a boots on the ground person. So once you've figured out, you know, can they do all these things you need or, or where their skill level is, right? Oops. Then you can figure out what you're going to pay them. So, you know, can they fix a spring on a door? Yes or no. If they can't, I mean, that might be fine. You know, if you could find a contractor in town that, you know, fixes doors, contract that out. Like my guy doesn't know how to fix fences. I mean, that's fine. We'll just work that into his salary. You don't know how to fix fences. So, you know, he's not going to get, you know, <laughs> the highest I'd be willing to pay because I know if the fence is ever broken, I've got to call a fence contractor and say, hey, I've got a hole in my fence. Go out and fix it, please. So uh, you got to take that into consideration. And I'll do this, you know, before we close on the property, I'll call around to fence companies. I'll call around to uh, handyman, a door contractor, some things like that. I'll see who's in town. And I'll ask him, you know, if I have a broken door, how much does that cost to fix? If, uh, you know, I need to, someone to come out and service my gate operator, how much does that cost per hour? Uh, and I'll see what that costs per hour in the area that I'm looking. And we'll, we'll take all that into account when we're looking for a boots on the ground person. So on a smaller unit or a smaller facility, uh, once it's stabilized anyway, I mean, when you first take over a place, they're probably gonna have lots and lots of work to do. But once it's stabilized, you know, you don't have people coming in and out all the time. You're not cleaning up a big mess. I mean, you may only need them twice a month to go out, uh, you know, maybe once to overlock units and take pictures of auction units, another time to, you know, uh, change the, the lock on the, the gate or change the code on the gate. And then they've got to be there, you know, minimum once a month, twice a month, just to make sure the place stays clean. 
you know, you want to make sure people aren't dumping sofas and things like that. If it happens, uh, you know, it's good if they have a, uh, a trailer, they can load it up on a trailer and bring it to the dump. If your maintenance guy doesn't have a trailer, you're going to have to find out how much a dumpster is and keep that in mind. So if there's a bunch of trash out there, you're going to have to buy a dumpster, have them drop it, put it in there, 